All right, in this video, we're going to be exploring a little bit more um, about shapely shapes. So what I'm showing here is a, a GeoPandas data frame. And in it, it has a geo series, right, the geometry series. And then within there, I have a bunch of these different shapes. I have polygons, for example. And so if I want to look at the type of this top right one, I can say dot .i location, uh, the zeroth row, the last column. I see the type of it is a shapely polygon. Now, we've been dealing with different types already um, when we've been drawing things, kind of custom things in Matplotlib. And, uh, but shapely is a little bit more sophisticated. It'll let us do things like, you know, figure out whether two shapes overlap each other. Um, what is the overlap? Is one shape contained within another shape? Um, where do two lines intersect, right? So more of these mathematical things. So in addition to just learning how to draw a circle, how can we um, do these more sophisticated things? And so as an example, we're going to create a simple um, custom visualization, a Venn diagram. Uh, it's going to look something like this. Not necessarily the best uh, visualization when I only have two sets like that. I mean, you could imagine other ways of showing this, um, such as a, a, you know, maybe a bar breakdown or something like that. Uh, but this will give us a good example of how to use um, shapely and draw circles like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a little bit of code um, that will take two sets, maybe something like this, and um, then it's going to draw the Venn diagram. And the shading or darkness of the different areas will indicate how many of those um, points are in each of these combinations, right? So we can kind of quickly visually um, compare, right? It's going to be grayscale. Uh, maybe this is a more useful if we had three categories, right? Then it is maybe a good way to display things. For now, it's mostly just practice. Okay, so I'm going to head over here. And, um, and so I have to import some stuff from the shapely thing, right? So I'm going to say uh, from uh, shapely.geometry import. You know, I could import polygon if I wanted to. It turns out there is no um, circle, but there is a point. So I can import point like this. And if we have a point, it's actually relatively easy to get a circle. So let me try that. First, I'm going to create a point at, um, you know, maybe 1, 1, like so. And I can see right there that, uh, that this is integrated with Jupyter Notebooks, right? So I can visualize that point. Um, now what I can do is I can set a boundary or a buffer around that uh, to create a circle, right? So I can have a buffer of 0 0.5 or... Um, it's kind of auto scaling, right? But I just drew a, a larger circle there, right? So I can I can draw these things, and um, and and so what we'll do now is we'll want to draw these on top of a matplotlib area, right? So let me let me do my matplotlib import stuff. So I'm gonna say um, from matplotlib import pi plot as as plt, okay. And um, and then I down here I'm going to say subplots as usual. So I'll say figure ax equals that. And so I have this area. And um, and what I'd like to do is somehow draw this circle on top of that area, right? And that way I actually have some sort of scale to it. And um, instead of a kind of you know resizing every circle to be the same. And um, and so this is not quite right now. This is not going on top of here. Uh, we've seen before that we can do things like this. We can say um, ax.add uh, patch or um, or what else could we do? We could um, uh, you know also do add artist is what we've done before. And, um, and we've seen ways to create a circle here, uh, things like that. Uh, what we want to do now is somehow glue together matplotlib and shapely. How can I add um, this circle that I created and uh, and shapely uh, to my AX, right? So maybe I'm going to just try it and show you what happens. So I'm going to try adding this, and uh, and it doesn't work. And the reason is that, well, let's look at the error here. So the polygon that we're adding, right, doesn't really have um, exactly what we want, right? It's not um, of the artist type. So what we have to do here is import a little bit of glue from this other package called Descartes, right? So I'm going to say from Descartes import polygon patch. So Descartes is integrated with Shapely. And it turns out that what I can do is I can, even though I can't directly add one of these Shapely circles, I can add the poly patch version of it. 
and uh, and maybe I actually have to rerun this. And there we go. I can actually have, and you can see, well, it's actually quite large, right? Because I have this one by one, and my radius is one, right? So it's a little, it's like this quarter circle. One other thing here: why are we talking about polygons uh, when we have circles? It turns out when I run this thing, it's just creating a polygon with a lot of um, kind of small edges, right? So even though I might think of a circle as a separate thing, um, you know, it's just going to end up being a polygon uh, when I'm actually um, working with it. Okay, so that's good. So I think what I'd like to do now is actually have my two circles. And, um, and maybe I'm going to do something like this. I'll say that's one circle. And, uh, and then let's get another circle here. Uh, maybe I'll start at position uh, two. All right, so those, are, those should overlap a little bit, right? If, uh, you know, they're only distance one apart from the radiuses, and they each have a radius of one, so those radiuses will overlap. Um, you know what, I'm not going to see it right now, though, because it's not large enough. So maybe I should do this. I should say something like ax dot set uh, x lim zero comma three and uh, and let me also set the y right. So I'm gonna say ax dot set y lim zero comma two and I'm I'm wondering why I'm not seeing that there. You know you know what it is. I need to. Um, Right, I need to add them each as an artist, right? So let me let me add the C1 and C2 as well. So, oops. Let me add both of those. Great, and then that looks decent. Um, you, you know, I guess what I would really do is I'd have to add some sort of alpha like that to make them overlap. Um, so this is not bad, right? I can draw those two circles and it looks decent. Uh, but what I'm ultimately gonna have to do um, is figure out how I can control these three areas separately, right? I don't really have two circles that I shade independently. I need to shade three independently because I want the shading to indicate how many are in each of these three uh, categories, okay? So, so here's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to actually head down here to demonstrate this. Um, if I want to, I can take the intersection of these, right? So this was C1. I guess C2 looks the same. Uh, but I can say c1 dot intersection c2, right? And then I can get that shape that is two circles overlapping. Or I can also take a difference, right? I can say what is the difference between these, right? And so I, you can say I'm going to get these three pieces of the Venn diagram uh, just like that. Okay, so I've just been messing around with having some circles. Uh, let's actually get a little bit of data here. Um, so we have something to work with. So maybe what I'll say is I want, um, I may have different quantities. So quantity A uh, will be, I don't know, five. Quantity B will be uh, two. And, and let's say the quantity for AB will equal three, right? So what I'm imagining, right, is that there's five pieces of data that are in this left piece, which I'm gonna call that circle A, uh, three that are on the uh, right, or I'm sorry, two that are in the right piece, I'm going to call that circle B, and then three that are in both um, A and B, right? And eventually I'm going to actually compute this from a set, right? So let me make a to-do here. Compute from a set. Okay, so that's good. And, and so what I need to do first, I need to get these three different circles and then shade it um, according to this, okay? So how am I going to get these three different circles, right, for A, B, and AB? Um, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say, maybe I'll just capitalize these things, right? I'm going to say a equals c1 dot difference of c2, right? So that will be, that will be just this left piece, right? Everything in the first circle uh, that's not in the second circle. And, uh, and then in the second one, it's going to be everything that's in there, uh, but not here. And then a, b is going to be c1 dot intersection c2. All right, so so let, let's do this. I mean, I eventually want to draw all of these things, and and so I can do that. I can say something like this. Maybe I'll say something like for area, and uh, may, maybe I'll say a b a b. Uh, I'm going to draw those things. Right? I'm going to convert it to one of these patches, 
I'm going to draw it, right? So I'm going to take that area, convert it to a polygon patch, and then add it uh, to the AX. So let me just run that. And, uh, and that's cool, right? I can see that I'm drawing each of them independently. Right? It's hard, it actually looks the same, right? It just as when I was drawing the circles. Um, but, but let's make those colors different and, um, and we'll see what's going on. Um, what I ultimately want to do is I don't want to just loop over these areas, right? These three areas. Uh, I want to loop over this at the same time, right? Kind of in lockstep. Um, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say quantity here. And then I want to loop over these together, right? So QA comma area A. I'm going to make all of these tuples actually, right? This is kind of a slick way to loop over both at the same time. This is quantity B, and this is quantity AB. Right, so the first step is that quantity A and area A will go to these two variables. Then quantity B and area B will go to these two, these two, go to these two. Okay, so I can I can kind of independently loop over each of So let me let me just make sure this is working, right? Um, by I'm going to print off what my quantity is in each case. I see I get my three different quantities. Um, you know what we're eventually going to want to do is draw that on top of here. So so maybe let me do this. I'm going to say um, after I draw that, I'm going to say ax dot text. And um, remember when I'm doing text, there's three pieces. There's an x. There's a y, and then there's a string. Um, maybe let me just make the string high for now. And I need to figure out what these x and y's are. You know what I can do? I can take these plot areas and find the center of it. Right? I can say area dot centroid. This is something that all the shapely shapes have, and, and this is a point, right? So, but I can pull out of that point the x. And the same thing here, right? I can pull out the Y, right? So all shapelies have these centroids. I can draw that, and I can see it says high in each of these cases. Let me make that a little bit larger, right? So I'm going to say uh, size equals, I don't know, 16. It's kind of hard to see in that black back, um, dark background, so maybe I'll make this a little bit lighter for now. So I'll say face color um, of these polygon patches is going to be... Um, let's make it like a light gray. Okay, so I can see that's working out pretty well. Um, this is the centroid of each of these. Uh, and, and then, of course, instead of that text, I want it to be whatever the quantity is. So I'm going to put my quantity here. And, uh, and it's actually automatically, I thought that was going to be an error, but it's automatically converting that integer to a string for me. Okay, so I can, can see I can take each of those. Okay, so now for the hard part, right? I'm drawing these three areas. Uh, but I really want um, the darkness of the area uh, to be based on the color. And, and so let's do this. Let's, um, I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say uh, percentage of max is going to be well, whatever my quantity is over something. Let me, let me just get the maximum earlier on, right? So my quantity max is going to be this. It's going to be QA. QB, QAB, and, uh, and so what we're going to show by the darkness of each of these is how many points there are relative to um, the area that has the most points. Okay, so I want to divide this by my Q max, and then I want to use this thing to, uh, to get a color. All right, so maybe I'll say this. I'll say something like uh, color, uh, maybe I'm going to say this is like a background color. BG is background, um, is really just going to be this percentage of max, right? And I want to convert that to a string down here, right? So I'm going to do BG color, and um, and, and I see that's, that's close, right? It's not quite right. Um, the problem I have is that, uh, well, let me just print off what these colors are. Print off the BG color. As, as I see the first one, right, this is the biggest quantity in the far left. So when I divide that by the max, I get 1. And it turns out that um, 1 is white and then 0 is black, right? So kind of the opposite, right? I, I guess um, I guess when I have a higher quantity, I want uh, less color, right? So it stands out more. So what I should really do is I should just take 1 minus this 
and then that's good, right? My largest quantity is the darkest. Um, now, now this is not great, right? Because uh, I can't read it anymore, right? So this is really uh, kind of scaling me all the way up to the max. But what I'd really like is for um, uh, the darkest color to be a dark gray, so I can actually read the font. I don't want it to be a solid black. So what I should do is instead of just having this piece, I want to try to take some sort of average, right? I want to, um, maybe I'll take like 60% of this, right? So 60% of that, and then maybe 40% will just be uh, kind of light color, right? So that we always get a little bit of light color in everything, right? So I guess what this means then is that all the colors will be somewhere between 0.4 um, and, uh, and 0, right? So I'm going to do that, and uh, and that actually looks much better, right? I can actually see uh, see what these things are. Um, okay, so far so good. Let's take a look at this. What have we done so far? Right? I mean, we're figuring out these different quantities, uh, and we're um, computing these three areas, and then based on these three areas, what are these things? These are shapely polygons. So we're looping over the shapely polygons, and then in each of them, when we draw the shapely polygons, we're converting to a polygon patch that we can add as an artist. At that point, we can set a color based on the quantity. Right, so we're kind of pairing up these colors with these three areas that we computed. Okay, so, so there's just a few more details here. Maybe one that I ought to do is I ought to make the figure a little bit smaller. And maybe I'll just make it something like, um, maybe it'll be like three inches by two inches so I can fit it a little bit better here. Let me get rid of this as well. Uh, that still looks good. Um, other details that I may want to do is I may want to get rid of, um, of that legend, or not the legend, but the axis, right? That doesn't look good here. And I can do that relatively easily. I can just say plot.axis off. That's a nice looking plot. And uh, it seems like I have a print here somewhere. Actually, no, that was just uh, from the axis. Okay, so that's looking good. And then the last thing I want to do is I want to put some labels on top of here, uh, and uh, and that will look nicer, right? So I think what I want to do, I don't want three labels, right? It's obvious what the center one is. I just want a label over A and a label over B. Okay, so may maybe I'll do that at this point, right, when I'm actually creating these. I know what the positions of these are. So I'm going to say ax.text. Um, for the first circle, maybe I'll actually I'll leave it like this even. All right, so the first circle... Um, I want to be at position x of 1, and um, and then I want to be on top of it, right? So I guess this is, center is at y equals 1, then a radius of 1. So I guess I want to be at position 2, and then that's circle A. So let me look at that. Let me make that a little larger. Um, so I'll say this is like size 20. And, and I can see it's kind of positioned a little bit weirdly, right? It's left aligned and at the bottom. So what I really want to do here is I want to make sure that the vertical alignment is at the bottom, which I think it already is defaulting to. And more importantly, the horizontal alignment is centered. All right, so when I run that, that A should move a little bit to the left. And that looks a little bit better. And so I have that. And then let me draw the other one as well. All right, and this one was at, uh, it's going to be at the same height. Uh, but now it's centered over the circle at x equals 2. All right, so I'm going to do that. And now I have my two um, two labels there. All right, so this is drawing pretty well. Um, you know, the one last piece that I want to do is I want it to be based on an actual sets. All right, so I want to have an A set and a B set. And, uh, and I have that as my first to do. All right, so I have all the visual aspects left now. It's just a matter of getting these three numbers. Um, and so let's just do this for the sake of completeness. Uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to have an A set, which will equal, um, let's say, 1 and 2 and 3. And then I'm going to have like a B set, which will, uh, I don't know, let's have a little bit of overlap. We'll say it overlaps 3, so, and then 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right, so I think the B part should be the darkest. And then I only have a little bit of overlap, so the middle piece should be the lightest. And then uh, that part to the left should be somewhere in between, is what I'm going for. So what is QA? 
um, this would be wrong, right? I can't say the length of the A set uh, because QA really means um, it's in A, but it's not in B, right? So of these here, right, some are in A, but some are also um, overlapping, right? Some of them are in A only and some overlap with B. So, so what I want to do is actually, um, it turns out that in Python I can do this set difference uh, much like I did it for my shapes, right? The code actually looks very similar. So I can say a dot uh, difference of my B set. And then uh, this one should be the opposite. So let, me, let me actually just run this and make sure it's working, right? Before I write a bunch of code. So I run that and uh, sure enough, I got two. Is, is that correct? I think um, is the difference between these two. I think it is, right? I think one and two, two numbers here that are in this. Uh, but not in here. So that looks correct to me. So I'm going to do that. I can get rid of this now. I'm just trying to troubleshooting. This one is what is in the B set, uh, but not in the A set. And uh, then this last one is, well, which of them are uh, in both of them? And it turns out just like this difference function happens to be um, similar for both sets and shapely shapes. Uh, it, it's pretty similar here too. I can use an intersection. right? So here I'm going to say, the length of a set dot intersection of b set. And let me try running that. Remember what I said earlier? Let's let's just double check before I look at it. Um, the far right should be the largest, right? The b only is the largest. Uh, the lightest is in the middle, and then and then on the left, right? That was trying to uh, here. Let me say it one more time. So on the left, right, I have the middle color. Uh, in the middle, I have the lightest color, and on the right, I have the darkest color, and that's exactly what I got. Okay, so in the practice, what you're going to do is you're going to convert this into a more general function so that people could use this for other things, right? They could pass in various sets and then label them as they like.